Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Trace video, and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 20. We're going to be using Maverick Vinales in Valencia, but with a little bit of a twist. So here we are, back of the grid, waiting on the red lights to go out. And they're out, but we have to start from pit lane. So we're going to give them at least 10 seconds advantage, and then we will go. I think that's about fair. Let's do it, Maverick! I think you lose around 10-15 seconds from the pit lane, especially in Valencia because it's not so far. Remember when Danny Pedrosa did extremely well from there? Well, let's see how we get on. Now, I'm a little bit concerned because I've not been on MotoGP 20 in quite a while. So I've gone on 14 laps because I'm not that confident in my abilities to try and chase them down with just a 10 second advantage. But we'll see, so it's 9.5 seconds already. Well, compared to playing Ride 4 a hell of a lot, as you guys have seen, I have neglected MotoGP 20 for about, well, since the Moto E video. And I'm expecting it to be something similar that I'm going to be taking it very steady until I get that feel again. Because this is the first time. I should have actually done a few dummy runs now I think about it, because I don't feel too confident on the bike. What I did find last time is that it was the brakes that, was, that separated me. Because on Ride 4 you have to be very gentle and the brakes are very powerful. I find that the brakes are equally as powerful on MotoGP. But you can actually hold and trail brake a lot longer on MotoGP 20 compared to Ride 4. As the beautiful sunny skies of Valencia shine upon Maverick Vinales. It's five and a half seconds. You know what, maybe 14 laps is going to be too much. Maybe we are going to catch him up pretty quickly. It's Brad Bender at the back of the grid. Well, apart from Maverick of course. MotoGP, well, Milestone, need to fix that. The KTM is a lot better than to be in the, fi the back of the grid. The only person you need to put in the back of the grid is Tito Rivat. Consistent, out of the points finisher. You know what, Tito Rivat, I, I feel harsh for saying that actually. Tito Rivat was incredible in Moto 2. He was also very good in Moto 3. Was it Moto 3 back then? It might have been the 125 for him. But, um,. Yeah, he was incredible in Moto 2, and it's a great shame to see him just not do anything in Moto GP. Of course, he's earning a lot of money with the the job he loves, and so I do not fault him at all for that. But I'm still surprised to see him there. That's the only thing I was going to say. So Davizio, so fastest man on track, one thirty two one five. Where are we going to be? We're going to be a 129.7. Maverick Vinales is on his way. So regarding MotoGP and regarding why Maverick Vinales has to start at the back of the grid, I don't know if I mentioned this already, I don't think I did, because he has used one more engine than required. So basically, Maverick has an engine allocation of five, and they have Yamaha have now used the sixth engine. So because of this, he has to start from pit lane. Which I think is fair, obviously, if an allocation's there. Because already Yamaha have been docked 50 points in the championship for um, for not using a specific sort of regulation or something. I'm not sure what what it was. I'm not very technical when it comes to stuff like engines and things. That sort of part eludes me. Well, basically, they're in they're in trouble for doing something. So, so as I say, we are getting into this now. 1.4 seconds behind Brad Binder. We're going to run it a little bit wide into turn 12. So turn 14, Adrian Campos, corner. Ooh, a little bit wide there. I just realised at the time I'm recording this, I'm concerned that there's going to be fireworks. There may be fireworks in the background. I have a Blue Yeti microphone, and it's pretty good, but it's also very sensitive, so it's, it will potentially pick up background noise. I will do my best to edit it out, but if it's there, I do apologise. Excuse me, Brad. Oh, Brad's not going to let me through. Well, we can get him here. Thank you. Oh, he wasn't close enough. Brad Binder, the South African. Speaking of which, he managed to win a Grand Prix from the back of the grid. Hareth. Can't remember the year, to be honest with you. 2016, I'll say. It's a guess. Let me know in the comment section if I'm right. So also let me know in the comment section before you end up watching the conclusion of this video, where do you think I'll finish? We've got 10 more laps. Are we going to win this one? How far ahead of the leaders? 
This is going to be a beautiful move up on the inside of Tito Rabat. Almost lost the front there, actually. Thank you very much. Vinales is coming through. Ikalekawona won't be able to take part in this Valencia GP this weekend. The European GP, they've called it. Due to his uh, brother testing positive for coronavirus. So unfortunately he's had to sit this one out. I like Ikalekawona. I've been rooting on him this season. And it doesn't look like he's going to get another ride. So it's a damn shame. I think pressure got to him though, definitely. I think he'll go back to Moto 2 and do well and then earn his place again. I'm guessing that's what's going to happen to Sam Lowe since he came up, went on to the Aprilia, didn't do too grand. I mean, the Aprilia is not a great bike though, is it? I mean, look at what happened to Scott Redding. So speaking of Aprilia, we do have Andre Iannone ahead. Aprilia is still standing by Andre Iannone, aren't they? They still want to keep him around after his doping ban. I actually like Andrea Iannone, but it doesn't look like he's that interested in the sport anymore. I think he cares more about his acting... Well, is it modelling he does? I think it's modelling. So Maverick's just going to squeeze past. Thanks, Andrea. I've gone wide. Ooh, fall back. It's Joan Mir, the championship leader down here in 17, at 16th place. I disagree. Valencia is going to be a great track for the Suzuki's. I'll tell you now, my pick for the championship this season is going to be Alex Rins on board that Suzuki. As much as I like Joanne Mir, I've watched him develop throughout the years. As much as I have watched everyone else, Alex Rins, even Marit Vinales here, Alex Marquez, etc. Peko Banyai ahead. I still think Alex Rins is the one who has the most gumption to win this championship. He has got a lot of bottle and he is not afraid of the challenge and he's not afraid of just going for it and considering he's been out and been injured for literally half the season I think it's bloody brilliant that he's up there fighting for this championship my pick personally I would love to see Frankie Morbidelli win it I think he's one of the best characters in MotoGP such a calm collected man really really just humble fella he just seems oh I almost bumped Joan Mir there oh oh my goodness my mistake but as far as Maverick Vinales goes, Fabio Quattararo, I think they're far too inconsistent to consider for the championship. Davizioso, I think, is out of it as well. I think his confidence is just gone. Sorry, Joanne. Give him a little bit of a love tap there. God, we were close to Peko Banyaya there. Trying to intimidate him. But we're going to get him here. Same place we got Tito Rabat. Thank you very much. Oliveira ahead. The Austrian GP winner. Oh, we're not quite going to make this stick, are we? We are. Potentially, oh, we go around the outside. That's how it's done. So, eight laps of fuel remaining. I do have the possibility of pumping up to power setting two. I wasn't sure how early Alicia was going to break there. But we're going to line him up beautifully from the McDoan corner. That's just gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Thank you very much. Zarko in our sights. See Rossi is leading this particular group. As we're going to go really wide here. As Alicia Spargo pinches my pockets. Okay, we're not going to allow that to happen. Excuse me, Alicia. So I believe that Alicia Spargo has made some quite nasty comments regarding Jorge Lorenzo in the Aprilia seat. Because they're on about having Lorenzo as the Aprilia test rider. And Alicia Spargo did not hold back against the Spaniard. I've seen a lot of comments regarding Alicia Spargo saying, well, what's he done in his career to judge Jorge Lorenzo? Now, I'm not one for all the drama and, the, and all the bitchiness. I'm here just to support the guys and have a bloody good time doing it. But uh, I do think, in this instance, he doesn't really have a right to say that but he did mention that obviously that Lorenzo was out of shape and Lorenzo agreed with that because he already said he stopped training but of course spin doctors like to make things sound much worse as Jack Miller looks to go up with the inside of his friend Mario Vinales well I'll just pinch that back thank you very much <laughs> thanks Jack Jack ass I like Jack Miller. You know what? Jack Miller is one of those riders I used to kind of dislike. I'm like, oh god, this guy's so annoying. 
But then after watching him, I was like, ah, that was never going to work. Penalty time handed to me, my mistake. Uh, but yeah, Jack Miller, I remember rooting against him in the Alex Marquez Championship hunt in 2012? No, 2014, 2014 it was. 2012 was Sandro Cortese, maybe. Maverick Vinales, 2013, Moto 3. I think that's right. I don't have any stats right now to check. That would be great, that, to be like a MotoGP commentator and have loads of stats at, at hand. So Valentino, just ahead of us on track. The Doctor. Just made an absolute hash of that corner there. Of course, Rossi back for the European GP. It'll be great to see the nine times world champion. The man from Tavuya. It's been it's not been the same without Valentino, I'll be honest, especially as a rock as a diehard Rossi fan. But we are gonna pass the Italian. Oh my goodness, that was a horrific move. Sorry, Valentino. What was that? That was a, a lunge online that you do on ride four. So for some reason the actual rider standings in the race is gone on the left hand side when we cross the line. I don't know why it does that, it's a weird glitch. Sometimes it's there and then sometimes it's not. So two seconds behind Frankie and the younger brother of Marquez, Alex Marquez. Sure somewhere his dad Julian is bouncing around <laughs> in the pit. You know, we are going to bump up the power just a little bit. Probably do it to... Wow, look how... No, maybe I can't. The fuel's just dropping so quickly. Two seconds. So before I went into this, I was thinking maybe a top eight finish. Because I knew I'd be a bit rusty from playing so much Ride 4. And that appears to be the case. I'm going to run it a little bit too wide into turn eight. My braking is a little bit off. That's where I'm losing the most time, I would say. It's Frankie Morbidelli. We're coming for you. Frankie says relax, and Dr. A says subscribe. <laughs> wow, we absolutely obliterated this one. Oh, again, that corner. I'm breaking as gentle as I would on ride for you see. But we're also trying to save the tyres, so... Slipstream would be vital here, though. I'm going to stick behind Frankie, but... Mavi Vinales, fast man track, 128.969. So there's a battle between Rins, Quattararo, and Marquez. So I think we could get a fourth place finish here. I would be pretty happy with that. Nine tenths of a second. Unless we get caught up in this battle. And we enter that corner pretty nicely there, into the Jorge Martinez Aspar corner. Wow, what was that? I was really, really out of shape. A bit like me at the moment. Damn pandemic. <laughs> I'm going to go wide into this bloody corner again. Alex Rins, I can see his unorthodox riding style of from here. I need to line Marquez up here. Get through as quickly as possible. Not sure if it's going to happen here. Well, we're trying it, though. We're going to try. Oh, Fabio! Oh! That was close. Could we really get Fabio on this one as well? We can indeed. Forces the Frenchman wide. Tell you what, if we get Alex Rins in this next corner, that'd be bloody brilliant. Oh, it's close. Doing my best not to bump into the Spaniard. Mario Vinales, compatriot. Oh, collision! <laughs> not allowing him back on the track. Tell you what, that was a good lap, that. <laughs> that was the fast lap of the race. And we got three overtakes. The penultimate lap now. Oh, I've gone wide again. Penalty time is very generous. Can we get on the podium? Is Cal Crutcher just a bit too far out of reach now? Is he out of touch? Great song by Hall and Oates there. Oh, 
So the penultimate lap. A lap and a bit of fuel left. I'd say I'm really curious to see what's going to happen up here, though. Is Crutchlow going to catch Davizioso? I mean, he's already there, but will he make a move upon the Italian? I'll tell you what, Crutchlow is all over the Italian. It's just a shame we're just not going to be able to compete in this lap. It's 1.2, actually. Oh, the power's gone! No way! <laughs> No! How did the power die? Oh my goodness, what an end. Get off the track. Oh my god. Oh no. I don't believe it. Oh, I don't believe it. No. That has never happened to me. Oh my god. Oh my. I don't think anyone expected that end. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. You know what? It is what it is. Dr. Ace is human. It, it's been a while since I've played with fuel on that I've not been focusing. Oh my goodness. Guys, what a video. I bloody love this game. I love making content. <laughs> so guys, Marquez wins. Davi second. Crutchlow third. That is your podium for the European GP. So guys, thank you very much for watching as always. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Ciao for now.